let us see how do we approach when we have suspected case of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. We do a diagnostic paracentesis, acytic fluid cell count and differential count is taken into account and we send the sample for culture. If the PMN is more than 250 cells per cubic millimeter, then the presumptive diagnosis of uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is confirmed. We are waiting for the culture and we have to start empirical antibiotic therapy without any delay. The antibiotic of choice has been asked us multiple times as an MCQ. In the past, we used to write septriaxone, but now most of the resources mention septoxin. So we have to consider that. Obviously, we are talking about predominantly the enteric organisms, predominantly the, the E. coli gram negatives mainly so cephotoxin covers them well so maybe you can consider that right so the drug of choice for empirical treatment is what is the drug of choice for empirical treatment yes cephotoxin right so you start cephotoxin usually at 2 grams iv 8th hourly and if the patient's albumin levels are low you might have to also give albumin because as i have told you it is considered as a risk factor hypoalbuminemia especially hypoalbumin levels in the Acytic fluid is a risk factor. So, in that case, you might have to give albumin. So, you have to give IV albumin on day 1 and day 3, particularly if there are additional risk factors present. The serum creatinine is more than 1 mg per deciliter or if the patient is in hepatorenal syndrome or if the bun is more than 30 mg per deciliter or if the total bilirubin is more than 4 mg. Okay, I, I particularly consider these 4 as criteria. The acytic fluid albumin less than 1 gram, which is considered as a risk factor. Anyway, in that case, you need to give the albumin if the renal functions are during the creat is more than 1 or the bun is more than 30 or if the total bilirubin is more than 4 all these patients are considered as high risk cases for the negative outcome following the sbp so in these cases to improve the outcome we have to give them albumin also so antibiotics and albumins are two mainstay of treatment once you get the culture report if the culture is positive then the diagnosis is confirmed it is sbp itself you will narrow down the antibiotic regimen based on the sensitivity pattern and you will generally give the course of 5 days. So, generally the recommendation is 5 days course. So, the story does not end there. We have to think of the long term therapy. Once you have a SBP, the recurrence rates are extremely high. So, probably as long as patient is going to have ascites, we might need to keep giving antibiotics. We will talk about that. Okay. Now, if the culture is negative, anyway, you will complete a full course of antibiotics. Okay. Now, on the other hand, you have a strong suspicion of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, but your PMN count is not more than 250, but you still have a strong suspicion of uh, the bacterial peritonitis. In that case, you still have to send for culture. And if the culture is positive, obviously you will have a guided therapy and there comes one picture. So, you have low PMN, but your culture is still positive, right? This condition is called as bacteriositis. There is no evidence of inflammation because the PMNs were normal, less than 250. But bacteria are present because we have identified on the culture and ascites is present. So, we call it as bacteriasitis and from there emerges one terminology called monomicrobial, monomicrobial bacteriasitis, bacteriasitis. Okay. The most common organisms responsible for this again are same E. coli and Klebsiella, right? E. coli and Klebsiella are the most common organisms. Okay, so these patients will also be treated aggressively with antibiotics. Okay, and if the culture is negative, anyway, we will not be giving antibiotics. 